is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. Game of Thrones shit to bed back in 2019 when its finale pissed off everyone. Since then, Game of Thrones has been sort of like that guy from Harry Potter whose name we're not supposed to say. Um, what's his name? Uh, Alan Rickman. May you rest in peace, Hans. Booby. Fantasy is at the forefront of entertainment. Most big properties are fantasy these days. It's like the real world sucks and people want to escape it. It's called escapist entertainment for a reason. But the closer we get to release, all we want to do is escape what's next for Game of Thrones. Now before I go any further, why did everyone hate the Game of Thrones ending? Please tell me down in the comments below. It was something that pissed off every fan, but the why is different with Game of Thrones. There are many reasons why the eighth and final season was a distinct total failure, and we're sure many, many books will be written on the finer, succinct points for the time of memorial. But to put it bluntly, this is what happens when writers don't write well in an effort to land this dragon as quickly and as pain-free as possible. Much of the blame for the throne's crash and burn has been put at the feet of creators and showrunners David Benahop and D.B. Weiss, and for once, the internet has come to a sensible conclusion. For everything about Season 8, the performances, the design, the effects, were firing on all cylinders for their lap of glory. But the writing was DOA. Characters marveled at their intelligence. Tyrion, Varys, become remarkably stupid. The big bad of the series, the Night King, was dispatched with alarming ease in a world-ending battle where they precisely one major character died. Cersei Lannister decided to take time out of her busy schedule to sip wine on a balcony and never return. Daenerys Targaryen turned into Hitler. Well, that answers a lot, but there's even more, and I'll answer that one in the future. Game of Thrones ended so poorly that the guys who made the show, Ben Hoff and Weiss, were slingshot around the sun and fucking fired upon re-entry. After the Game of Thrones fiasco, I mean finale, Ben Hoff and Weiss were kicked from Star Wars. And this is Disney Star Wars that gave us this. <laughs> I thought Game of Thrones would go away, but there's a new show. Not season 9, but House of the Dragon, which stars Matt Smith, not as a time-traveling doctor, but as Daemon Targaryen, the younger son of Prince Balon. Game of Thrones is known for one thing, well, two actually, nudity and a terrible finale. And it looks like Game of Thrones is giving us more of what works. Matt Smith was openly critical of House of Dragon's numerous sex scenes featuring his character Daemon in a recent interview with Rolling Stone. You do find yourself asking, do we need another sex scene? And they're like, yeah, we do. I guess you have to ask yourself, what are you doing? Are you representing the books, or are you diluting the books to represent the time we're living in? And I actually think it's your job to represent the books truthfully and honestly, as they were written. I have to be careful here so I can accurately represent my thoughts on this. More nudity is not a bad thing. Just ask the countless horror directors who have built their empire on tits and blood. I've sat through cinematic trash because of the nude scenes, and most people will. Be honest with yourselves. That's why it's an entertainment. It's a quick way to get a response with minimal effort. How can I be mad at more boobs than a show? I like geek culture, but I'm not dead. It's so confusing, because there's a split where nudity and sex are accepted. Certain genres and forms of entertainment, like Game of Thrones, need it to thrive. The audience is watching for the sex and the violence. They want titillation. In video games and comics, they're erasing all the sexuality and violence. Grand Theft Auto is going to become socially conscious. Activision is more excited about the 25% increase in diverse employment than over their failing sales. Comic books have all but erased the curve of a woman's body. We're being treated poorly for liking what appeals to our natural instincts, but fantasy is two steps away from the money shot. All of these fantasy and historical shows are filled with skin and gore. I like both, but that's not enough. Fans also want quality. For a while, Game of Thrones had that balance down, but towards the end, they lost it. And I wonder if this new show is full of it, nudity, not shit, to help the audience forget what they're watching. Matt Smith's concerns are valid. After a bad show, fans are a little cautious, and the actors have to know how Game of Thrones ending pissed people off. Hell, it was popular enough that they were probably watching it themselves. HBO or Warner Bros. Discovery, you've been using that one for a while now, get the shirt, has to impress a lot of people. They can't have a show that's tits, dragons, tits, blood, repeat, though that's a hell of a title. It seems like everyone is some puritanical tightwad that gets offended over everything. How is life fun like that? Matt Smith, on the other hand, is making the show. He's read the script. He knows its shortcomings. You can't cover up a bad show with an uncovered actor. The internet exists. There's a hub for that sort of thing. And you don't even need a boring plot. Anytime I think of bad historical fiction or fantasy that has no backstory but a fuck ton of nudity, I think of Caligula. Is this what they're making over at Warner Bros. Discovery? There's a balance somewhere. Let's find it. Look at Life Force. Great movie, tons of nudity. Great is subjective, but Matilda May, she's the epitome of greatness.
It sounds like they're using nudity as a crutch, and after a while it gets boring. That, and this is 2022, so it'll mostly be male nudity. Ugh. Game of Thrones, House of Fire, and Dick. No wonder George R. R. Martin hasn't finished it. By the way, I have an interesting take on that why he's not done. You want to hear it? Now yeah, subscribe and I'll make it in the future. Just for you, and just for you. There's another fantasy show that's about to drop. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. God, I just hate that title. It sounds like a bad Marvel comic. Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings of Power. Not a fan, but I do firmly believe that Mighty Morphin Power Ringers is sure to be the biggest hit of 2029. Mark my words. Not a day goes by that I don't see this show talked about online. Rarely, if ever, as in never, have I seen people excited for this show. How can you blame them? The timeline pisses people off. The casting choices piss people off. The premise pisses people off. Clearly, it's just the fans. No, it's not. Matt Smith was absolutely correct when he said, it's the job to represent the books truthfully and honestly as they're written. Lord of the Rings is probably the most influential work of the modern age. I'd say Star Wars had a bigger impact, but Lord of the Rings inspired many elements of Star Wars. Show of hands, who out there is a Tolkien fan? All right, cool. Now keep your hands up if you got the free bottle of KY jelly Amazon gave out during Prime Day. You didn't? Well, get ready, because Amazon's going in dry and they take blue chew. I don't know if you're aware, but there's this thing called the Doomsday Clock, and it's used to measure how close we are to nuclear annihilation. Apparently someone, allegedly the same guy who stole the Declaration of Independence, altered the clock, so now it's counting down the days until the Rings of Power, and we're another minute closer to midnight. Can someone show me something to have faith in? Batman tried to learn faith in the Justice League, but his parents didn't come back. Amazon is praying that fans will support this $1 billion pile of orc shit. With multiple seasons confirmed, we're about to enter the new dark age of fantasy. How perfect. This mirrors much of what we watch. The king died, someone else took over, and the land fell. Lord of the Rings is lost to Amazon, but it's not even the real Lord of the Rings. It doesn't feature the characters we all love. It's a Lord of the Rings branded show. So much of genre entertainment is a brand name with no soul. The Matrix 4 is a Matrix branded film, but not a real Matrix film. Disney Star Wars films are Star Wars branded films, but they have no spirit or soul like the originals. Marvel is now a brand with little soul for each film as well. I'll spare you a diatribe here, but allow me to direct you to our back catalog. Over a thousand videos of topics you're sure to love. Subscribe now, and if you have already, thank you. You can hear me cover Star Wars and Marvel over there. HBO and Amazon don't get it. The mega corporations have been buying up all the IPs for years, and now we have a show clearly created by a studio that's an offshoot of a company known for everything but entertainment. Yeah, The Boys is great, but that's not good enough for me to blindly believe that all adapted content from Amazon will be good. The people working on this show are focused on the really irrelevant things, like diversity of the hobbits. Black hobbits aren't going to sell this show. If I want hobbits in the hood, I'll watch Leprechaun, because at least I'll laugh. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, is like the Book of Boba Fett. Whatever you thought you knew about the history of the universe has been given the poochie treatment. Though it's shit like the Rings of Power that need to die on the way back to its home planet. And how can these companies lack self-awareness? Lord of the Rings ended. Bringing back Star Wars wasn't the financial win for Disney. Why not adapt or create new things? What else can this show add to the mythos? Nothing. Legally. Again, this all feels wrong. This show feels like a legal loophole for lascivious actions at the back door without prior consent. The Dark Age starts now. The countdown is on, and eventually, when the clock hits zero, it'll be the end for our favorite fantasy properties. And then, well, darkness. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from world class bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from world-class bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on world-class bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from world-class bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no, they're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here, and, well, it's man versus machine, and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS, and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff, so if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all! We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.